what is up it is your boy omega smg coming back at you with another video on mixing uh i'm gonna just keep on doing these until i get tired of um making these videos just because i think it's really nice to be able to teach people like this um, oh I, that's probably okay so this is a subscriber <laughs> track um i thought it was pretty good the same situation as earlier the mix was originally just really really terrible but um uh, like the song itself was good um so let's go ahead and go over everything so as you can see yet again it's a track out so i'm gonna go ahead and start off with the drums because you know that that's like the most important part of any track um so Man, I've just been in mixing mode for um, this other guy's track for a while, so I'm like, uh, I need to get a new mouse, because it's like double clicking there. Perfect. Okay, so let's just listen to these drums, because they're beautiful. Okay, so, wait a second, is the breath sound effect in there? Because, like, the breath is probably one of my favorite parts of, like, this entire track. Um, yeah, um, so, I tried to mix this to sound a bit more, like, psychedelic, um, and the breath just really feeds into that. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so, okay, yeah, it's not getting the full breath in there. Oh, well, we'll just ignore it for now. Um, so let's go ahead and go over the kick first. Um, this kick isn't like ultra punchy or anything. What am I doing? Oh my gosh, I feel like a big dummy. I forgot to cut out like that 20 hertz range. SMH, what am I doing? Yeah, uh, by the way, you're gonna have to see me click on things multiple times. It's gonna get really annoying. Um, oh well. So, Pro Q is bringing up, like, the 100 to 200 hertz range. Um, cause, like, the super duper low range I like to keep for, like, my bass. After that, put on Devil Lock, cause it's, like, literally the only thing I know how to use at this point. Uh, no, it's just great plugin. I just turned up everything and turned down the mix really low. You can hear some overdrive in the sound because of it, and then I compressed the sound. Like, this is... I did a pretty standard job with, uh, the kick. I'm, I'm pretty sure if you've ever watched my videos before... Oh. Yeah, remind me later, Windows. Um... Then with the snare, there were two of them. So one of them was like a high snare, so I cut out the low end. And then there was this one uh, where I boosted the lows and then put a... Um, wait, I didn't boost the lows. Here, here is quite the trick. So what you should do instead of ever... Um, like pretty much... What you should do is, if you're able to subtract the frequencies that you don't want, it'll normally be better than boosting the ones you do. So, yeah, that that's pretty much what I did there. It, it's a good technique. Um, and then, I just compressed ever-living crap out of this, so... Uh, like, I just wanted to get the punch in there, and then with the snare on top of it... And then on top of that, I have Decapitator, max it out, and then I turn up the wet dry to like 50%. Uh, then Devil Lock, put the crush up to 4 and then mix it down to 30%. Then I just ever so slightly boosted the low end. Just a tiny amount. Uh, then a compressor. This is a lot lighter compression, as you can see from this ratio and threshold. Um, and then, so here is my snare, completely dry. And 
here it is with the effects on the like the pieces themselves. And oh. Yeah, here it is completely dry. Then with the effects I added on there. Then my fattening effects. Um and then the the closed hi hat it gets a tiny bit more interesting. So I have an instance of Pan Man, um, and I turned down the mix to fifty percent so that it was the kind of it has a very strange effect. I'll just let you guys hear it. So it's not going like really hard panning like it would if I had maxed it out but it's still there and then I have pro Q uh, cut the lows boost the highs and decimore adding more character decimore I add on all my hi-hats now it, it's just magic really um so we have our drums done um so now let's just listen to the intro and we'll just start breaking down sounds from there so I did disable that. I don't know why it's still there. Okay. So, this is that vocal chant you're hearing. So, uh, what this is what we have going on. So, we have Devil Lock Deluxe, as always. Um, I have the crunch turned up a bit, and then I turned down the mix to 30%. Um, then I added a vintage reverb from Guitar Rig. Uh, when he sent me this track, he was using Little Plate by Sound Toys, but I don't have that plugin yet. Um, so I just put on the next best thing, a plate reverb from Guitar Rig, and it got pretty close to the sound. Um, and then EQ, so boost that range for another melodic instrument, and then I boosted that range, then cut out the lows to make more room for the bass. Then Patcher. This is stereo imaging, so, um, like, taking this range of sounds and then, um, just making it a tiny bit more narrow. I didn't want to make it all the way mono, though. Uh, then I just... Hmm. Okay, um, I do weird things when I'm mixing late at night. I don't know why I have that EQ there, honestly. Uh, okay. Then on top of that, there's this pad going on. So I have the captator on here. I have the drive pulled up really high, but I have the mix at like 50%. Uh, then I just have... I... Oh, man. This is, this is a really weird feeling because a lot of this stuff... I mix really late at night. <laughs> Mixed it in mono too. Um... So I'm just looking at these EQs and I'm thinking, what's the reasoning behind this? But hey, trust your ears. Okay, he here's a more reasonable EQ. So I cut out those lows and then I boosted that range. Um, and then this is what that sounds like. Oh yeah, also, uh, can't forget about LX480. I have it as my reverb track. I kind of use it to glue everything together. Uh, so here's that transition where the bass sound comes in along with another melody. So, this melody, I have it really boxed in, and then I added a compressor on it to make it a bit louder and to draw it out more, and then I panned it to the left, um, just because there, like, there's a lot of stuff in the background of that sound, but you don't need to hear it all. You just need to hear the duh, 
uh, like I know that's terrible recreation just like on this pad um, this pad I think that like it fills space and the only time you really need to be able to hear it is at the very end when it adds emphasis because um, that's pads just fill in frequency really um, then this bass sound oh my gosh I hate this bass sound with a burning passion uh, like it, it it actually sounds pretty good I'm not hating on the guy I'm just saying it was so awful to work with <laughs> so first track I got sent like it was literally colliding on itself him and I still have no idea why it was a monophonic instrument um, it was just confusing, so he sent me a new track, and he's like, oh, yeah, that bass sound was so muddy, dude, uh, here, here's a new take, so, this is a much better take, but it's, um, uh, like a Moog sound, but, um, it ha I'll just let you guys listen. So, if you can hear that, it has, like, that Drake-style Moog sound that you see in, like, every single song ever, but it has a bit of punch before it, um, because, it, it, like, it's a Moog sound with a filter. So, I had to find a way to make it so that this kick would layer well over this bass, even though there's already some punch to it, and there were, there were just a lot of problems with it, so... Uh, I added decapitator to it to make it a bit fatter, and I have it at like 60%. Um, it, like, I was not messing around with how much I wanted it, like, distorted. So then I added Datalog Deluxe. Um, this, then I pulled up that darkness all the way. This is, serves a few functions, so, um, this makes it so that there's more distortion, makes it so that it's more compressed, and then, um, it cuts off the high end and then I have this EQ here so cut out the super low end boost the like ultra lows uh, do a scoop for the mids and then a very slight dip for the highs and then a compressor um, like a compressor for these Moog style bass sounds is almost essential because um, like they're always just going in and out of volume it, it's like someone put an LFO on the volume it's really annoying to work with, but these sounds sound so good. So you just gotta you gotta live with it sometimes, you know. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna let this track play out uh, with the magic of Sony Vegas, and then I'm gonna leave a track to the original in the comments. And yeah, uh, if you hate this video with a burning passion, if you hate me with a burning passion. Leave leave a nice comment in the in the comment section. More comments means I rank higher in search engine results. And, like feel free to leave a dislike or a like too. I'm I'm not your boss. Um, yeah. This is your boy, Omega SMG.